I feel certain your daughter liked that one, madam. They're all so lovely. I, I get confused. I'm afraid, I'm afraid you're going to be rather impatient with me. Not at all, madam. <laughs> uh, perhaps, perhaps my daughter had better come in and select one for herself, if, uh, if that's convenient. Of course, madam. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm not tired of the tube station. Right, you are, ma'am. Collins, all right. What shit? Look here, there's something in his hand. Medic, born 1935 A.D. Medic, born 1935. A.D. That's a big help. Collins wouldn't have died fighting for it if it didn't mean something. Well, of course not. It means medic's a baby. Born this year. You're wasting your time in Scotland, Yard Hall. Try writing for punch. Yeah, that's all right. Well, you can look after them. Hope you found the commissioner well. He's an alarmer. Why shouldn't he be? The first policeman murdered in five years. The press are yapping their heads off at him. And there'll be six MPs asking in the house tonight why we haven't caught Medic. To which we shall answer? Well, we've assigned every man possible to the case. We'll keep on making arrests until the gang's broken up. Arrests? We've picked up a dozen men without one conviction. You can't hold a man for carrying a piece of paper in his pocket? Not one of them knows anything more about him than we do. The only way you'll ever find Medic is by slipping a man into his gang. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea, Hall. 
Especially after we've lost three of our best informers that way. Now, Colin. Doesn't mean that it can't be done. Simply shows that Maddock or someone probably had every man of the force spotted. Well, then what do you suggest? We send a troop of Boy Scouts after him? I've got an idea. Send those MPs who are going to ask the questions. Nobody would ever recognize them. Look, there's nothing to stop us from getting one of the kids out of the police college. They've never been on duty and nobody knows them. You can't send boys on a man's errand. Well, I don't know. They're young, but they've been trained. Anyway, we'd still have the problem of how to slip a man into the gang. This time it might be a good idea not to try. Are you going in for comedy now? I mean, maybe we could fix it this time so that Maddock goes after our man. By giving him a reference from the yard, I suppose. No, but if he pulled a job cleverer than anything Maddock's done, Maddock might invite him in. I wish we could think of something clever that Maddock hasn't thought of. It ought to be something along the jewellery line. That's Maddock's long suit. I know a trick. Let's see how it goes. The crooks find out the name of a wealthy man who's out of town. Then they go down to a prominent jeweller's. How do you do? Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm Lord Medcraft's secretary, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, something for yourself or for his lordship? Uh, for, for neither of us. His lordship wants a wedding present for a godchild. Uh, a bracelet, a uh, diamond, you know, sort of thing. Something quite nice. About, uh... How nice? So oh, I should say, uh, about a thousand pounds worth. Of course, sir. This way, sir. Thanks. Yes. Very pretty. Um, send round two or three of these, will you, so that uh, his lordship can make a selection? Yes, sir, of course. I should fancy, I think, uh, this one and this. And, uh, and that. Very good, sir. Shall we send them round this afternoon? Yes, uh, any time this afternoon. Very good, sir. Thanks. Oh, by the way, uh, let me have your card, will you, so that his lordship can get on to you personally, in case he doesn't like those. Yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Lord Maycroft. This is his house. Monius. Sign here, please. Stop. Curious? What's curious? Something from Monius for his lordship. Probably a mistake. Not necessarily. He must have telephoned from Paris. Hello? Is that the Earl of Medcross residence? This is Monnier's. Oh, yes, Monnier's. What, sir? Oh, yes. I suspected there might have been a mistake. We'll send right round for it. And be certain that you'll give it to nobody but our representative, Mr. Brown. He'll have his card to identify himself. Buy for Monnier's. You have a parcel that was delivered to Lord Medcraft by mistake. Oh, yes, sir. They were on the telephone about that. But they said I was not to give it to anyone. Right, of course. In my card. Quite so, sir. Just a moment. I hope everything is quite satisfactory, sir. Everything is not satisfactory. How can you prove you've given this to me, if anything happened? Yes, of course, sir. Always get a receipt when you're dealing with jewellery. I may be Maddock, for all you know. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Good night, madam. Good night, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. The man has me. Yes, sir. You know how to make them? <laughs> yes, sir. Canadian whiskey, you know. Yes, sir. I learned how to make them in New, New York. Yes, sir. Just got back from New York. Really, sir? Mm. <laughs> I had a great time. You could have a great time there. Yes, sir. Mm. Different from London. Can't have any fun here. Everything closes. Now you, what time do you close? Uh, ten minutes, sir. Eleven o'clock? <laughs> Disgusting. Can't have any fun in London. Well, uh, depends on what you're looking for, sir. Stay up all night if you like in New York. Well, uh, that's not impossible in London, sir. <laughs> Pretty silly, though, isn't it? Staying up all night by yourself? No, you wouldn't need to be by yourself, sir. Now, I, uh... What ho, have I found you? 
I've been combing London for a fellow like you. Now, tell me what you were going to say. Well, uh, I won't deny that if I knew you, sir, I might give you a tip. A tip, eh? Not a minute. See that? Do you know what that is? Uh, uh, American money, sir. Yeah, worth about a guinea. How's that for a tip? Uh, well, sir, uh... Are you a member, sir? In perfect standing. Very good, sir. Now, sir, will you have a bit of roulette or a chemin de fer? You can't try the wheel. Send the tasha to me. There, a pass. Yes. See the chap over there playing the wheel. The young one? Yes, that's better. Mm -hmm. Usual thing, Lord, is anything suspicious? Yes. <laughs> that necessary? You don't expect him to get interested in my mind, do you? I don't expect him to get interested in you at all, if you see what I mean. <laughs> Your fun. Is that chip yours? No, no, I don't think so, but uh, but even if it should be, won't you play it for me? I don't seem to have any luck. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. 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 Thank The number 20, noir, there, hey man. Sorry. And that doesn't seem the royal road to riches, does it? One can always try. Try again. I can't. Not if I want to be sure of my taxi fare home. As bad as that. Oh, I can arrange to pay for a drink for sides. Um, won't you come over to the bar and let me prove it? Brandy? Yes, brandy. Two brandies, please. Yeah. Rum place, isn't it? Never expect to find one here. Why not? Oh, I don't know, gambling, underworld. Doesn't seem like London somehow. No. No. <laughs> Well, cheers. Cheers. I wonder who runs it. I don't know. Tell me, is it fun throwing money away? Oh, I wasn't throwing money away. In fact, my dear, um... My name is Natasha. 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 A nice name. And as Russian as ever was. Yes, Russian. Will we have to find somebody to uh, introduce us properly? Are you being funny? Not at all, I mean it. Might be nice to be introduced to someone once in a while. Now who's being funny? <laughs> I work here and this is part of my job. I'm silly enough to be pleased when it doesn't show. You expect me to believe that? Why not? Well, I mean you're... I mean you're just a kid, aren't you? <laughs> Yes, what kind of job? <laughs> Don't come here again. That hmm? wheel's not on the level. Nothing here is. With the exception of you. Wrong again. Then what made you warn me? I don't know. I've never done it before. Let's call it my maternal instinct. I see. 
And look here, if you feel like mothering me just a little longer, you can do me a real favor. Yes. You know where I can get rid of something? An object of worth and uh, no questions asked. You mean you want to sell something? Well, not exactly. I want to get some money for something. And no questions asked? And no questions asked. I see. You're very logical, aren't you? I work here, and so naturally you suppose that I must know people who don't ask questions. No, not at all, my dear. I just meant that I thought... What is this object of worth? That's not by any chance from Monius. I said no questions asked. <sighs> the joke's on me. Well, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. Except that I thought... You were on the level. Well, it only proves that you never can tell. Yes, I know somebody for you. Wait here. Another brandy, please. Let's see, man. No, oh, I don't know, did I? Have a drink. You look carefully. You'll see I've got my hand in my pocket. I've got a gun in that hand. I want you to get your hat and coat. All right, let's go. I got tired of America, so I came home. Then I nabbed those bracelets. You got one of them. I hid the other two. Is there anything else you're interested in? Over here, I'm Maddock. I read the papers. Are you Maddock? No, but I'm speaking for him. How do you like being blamed for my money a job? This is Maddock, Borden. I've heard your story. I can use you. I'm not interested, Maddock. I'm perfectly happy working by myself. Who's going to stop me? You'll never pull another job. I don't like competition. And I don't like being an errand boy for you or anybody else. Why argue with him, Maddox? Let's get rid of him. I'll make my own decisions as usual, Delaney. Well, look here, Maddox. This light's absolutely ruining my eyes. Why don't we drop this chamber of horrors business and let's talk it over? That's impossible. Nobody ever sees me. Well, what do you say? Well, if that's how it is, what can I say? I'm broke. Stay straight with me and I'll make your fortune. Remember. Once you're in, you never get out. Alive. Seems simple. Not so simple. Tomorrow morning you'll get a problem to work out. All my resources will be at your disposal. You will have to make the plan. Consider it a test. That's all. Hey, wait a minute, Maddie. What about my bracelet? That'll be taken care of. All right, Delaney. Take him on
Sunshine. Did it ever occur to you to knock at doors? You're new, ain't you? Yes, I'm new. When you're working for Maddock, you ain't supposed to do anything what calls for knocking. Maddock? Go on, you wouldn't be here if you wasn't. What is this place? Headquarters? No, he's got a dozen houses like this for his people. Morning, lady. Did you pay my hotel bill? How do you think I got your clothes? Now, come on. Hurry up. I've got your orders. What's the plot? One of our men's in custody for passing counterfeit notes. Now, it's your job to figure out some way of getting him off. What? I admit I'm good, but I never said I was a lawyer. Well, that's all taken care of. Always is. You mean to say Maddox has a solicitor in the gang? Do you think he's crazy? No, the solicitors we've got working for us are absolutely on the level. They've never even heard of Maddox. In other words, I'm supposed to manufacture evidence that'll even convince a solicitor. Yeah, and the barrister. Now, look here, this fellow's name's Tommy Kane. There's his photograph. Is that his regular job, passing counterfeit? No, Tommy's one of the best safe crackers in the country. He, he just got uh, landed with the stuff. I see. Well, who's the solicitor? A.D. Newell. Has Matty got a bookmaker working for him? A bookmaker? Yeah, why? You tell me his name and I'll show you a trick. Well, Andy Purvis. Okay. Well, Morning. What can I do for you? You can do something for Tommy Kane. Who? Tommy Kane. He's one of your best clients, isn't he? Never heard of him. This is what he looks like. Never saw him before. Maybe Maddox was mistaken. Maddock? Yeah. Why didn't you say so in the first place? What's he want me to do? Well, first of all, we get our act rehearsed, and then we go around to the solicitors. And what is your interest in this case, Mr. Borden? Well, uh, Tommy Kane is, uh, he's one of my best friends. Then why didn't you bring this information to my attention before? Perhaps said he told me about it last night. That's right, sir. I only put two and two together when I was talking to Pete here. Ah. Well, since the case goes to trial tomorrow, this must be put before counsel at once. Now, Mr. Purvis, could you identify the notes you gave to the prisoner on the day of his arrest? Oh, I couldn't exactly do that, sir. But I'm sure of two things. One, that I took a lot of counterfeit one-pound notes that day, and the other, that I paid Tommy Kane with 60 of them. Uh, have you ever received counterfeit notes on the race course before? Oh, yes, sir. Every bookmaker gets them. We work so fast, we haven't got time to examine every note we take. Well, then, if the prisoner says that he received the notes from you, you're prepared to say that that uh, is possible? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. I see. Now, um, Mr. Purvis, the prosecuting counsel is bound to ask you this question. When you receive these counterfeit notes in your bag, what do you do with them? I take them back to the course and hope the people that gave them to me get them back again. In other words, you utter these notes yourself knowing them to be forged. The further comment is, Mr. Purvis, on such evidence that you should be in the dark instead of Kane. Now, look here, Mr. Addison. I haven't got time to testify at the court tomorrow, so if it's just the same to you, I'd sooner let this thing drop. And allow an innocent man to be punished, Mr. Purvis? This is no time for jokes, Purvis. You could excuse me, sir. May I say something? Yes? If a bookmaker finds counterfeit notes, he can write them off as bad debts, can't he? Yes. Well, that's what Purvis does. Someday that sense of humour of yours is going to get you into trouble, Andy. I thought everybody realised I was only being funny. I wouldn't pass a counterfeit note. Only by accident, of course, sir. I don't think I know your name. Peter Borden. Are you a friend of Kane's? Yes, sir. I think I ought to remind you that such a thing as carrying friendship too far. Manufacturing evidence, for instance. I can assure you everything you've heard is true, sir. It had better be if you want me to conduct the defence. Well, I think that's all, gentlemen. If we can rely on Mr. Purvis curbing his sense of humour when he gets in the witness box tomorrow. All right, sir. I will, sir. All right. Good morning. Now, uh, can you what was that point in the... Uh, we were discussing... Uh... I'll see you later. Wait a minute. I've had my orders too, Borden. I've got to take you home. 
You mean to say you knew all about this? My instructions were to do as you told me. And see you get back to Mulder's when it's over. Damn clever, these Maddox. Oi, taxi! Good evening. Have you a double room to let? One that faces the street? Yes. Will you come in? Thank you. To easily accommodate three with an extra bed? That's not necessary. It's for these two gentlemen. You get the morning sun in at the windows. My friend's deaf. You couldn't do better than this, boys. All right. We'll take it. Borden's idea worked, Maddox. They acquitted Kane this morning. The boy looks promising. I couldn't have planned it better myself. Clancy, I want Borden on the knee job. Now take these instructions. To meet a lady in Culver Place tonight. She will be waiting in a black Daimler. She has invitation to Lady Needs reception. We are after the need necklace. Be careful not to cause suspicion to fall on me. Is that the lot? Is that the lot? Yes, he's left the window. Let's go. We can't allow him to get away with the meat, Nicholas. I know, but we'll endanger Borden's life if we keep crabbing Maddox's plan. I'm perfectly aware of that, but since we have this information, we've got to act on it. We'll possibly lose our chance of catching Maddox. Uh, Maddox won't get suspicious if we follow the plan that I've suggested. But in addition, we must have someone at the reception to observe what happens. Well, if you insist, but if we send plainclothes men, we're bound to show our hand. Oh, he wants an observer, isn't it? Anyone can do that. That's it, Observer. Sybil Caden. What about her? She writes a society chat column in the Gazette, The Observer. She's bound to be there, knows everybody. Would it satisfy you if we didn't tell her too much and led her report to us? Well, it might. Give me the Gazette. Sybil Caden. Hello? Oh, hello, Inspector Codby. What fun! I haven't seen you for ages. Miss Caden, will you be going to the Mead reception tonight? Good. Now, I want to ask you to do us a favour. Oh, rather. Shall I come round? Rather. I'll wait for you. Which way is South Audley Street? All right, Borden. Hello, so it's you. So it is. <laughs> well, nothing could be nicer. I've missed you. Here's the invitation. Oh, can't this wait? I'm absolutely fed up with business. Do you know they've kept me on the go ever since the night we met? How do you like your new business connection? Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Well, then let's get on with this part of it. All right. Count and Countess Andrea Metri. <laughs> is that us? Naturally. Well, my luck's certainly in. Given a title and married to you. You know, Maddie always said he'd make my fortune. The lights will go out exactly at 11. You're to stand at the door and see that no one comes in or goes out. <laughs> what fun. Do I use violence? You use your head. 
By the time they get the lights on, I'll be gone. From then on, you're on your own about getting out. And the necklace will be gone when you are? Yes. Awfully thoughtful of Maddie. Everything arranged. Except how I keep out of jail if anything goes wrong. Oh, don't. Why? What's the matter? Well, nothing but... nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to frighten you. I'm not frightened. Yes, I'm frightened. I've got the feeling as if... as if something were going wrong. Oh, keep your chin up. Maddox never missed yet, has he? Oh, no. I suppose it's only nurse. Of course it is. Don't let it get you. You know, I can't believe all this about Maddox. Oh, what? Well, somebody must know who he is. What's it to you? Just curiosity. Curiosity's killed more than cares. Yes, well, that leaves us just about where we were, doesn't it? If you've quite finished with guessing games, you might be interested to know about tonight. Well? Our hosts don't know us, but we are friends of friends of theirs. Count and Countess Metri. Oh, dear, I've forgotten the, the Italian for accept. It is hardly necessary, Lady Need. We both speak English. Thank heaven. My Italian's awful. And Lord Need simply doesn't exist. <laughs> all work. But it's so kind of you to accept the invitation of a stranger. But we're all friends of the Princess Rossi. We're really a little angry with the Princess. She ought to have told us sooner that you were coming to London. Oh, you must forgive her. We left unexpectedly. Well, of course. Colonel oh, and Mrs. You enjoy Richard yourself. Lake. I'll try and come look after you later on. Thank you so much. Good evening. I hear you. Nice. Like to dance? I love to. Can't we? We have time. Well, we got over the first hurdle nicely, didn't we? <laughs> didn't we? Well, aren't you speaking to me, Countess? Sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm glad we, we didn't let the palace while we were away. Yes, why? We'd have had complaints from the tenants about the draft. <laughs> now, it's your turn, you say. Uh, it's not drafty. Do you ever take anything seriously? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, dancing, for instance. You dance well. Well, thank you, madam. You're not exactly the, uh, the white man's burden yourself. I'm beginning to feel better now. It's the dancing. <laughs> Good for the nerves. Mr. Conway Addison. What's the matter? Dance close to me. Conway Addison's here. Oh, my well, dear. Marcia, how are you? Ah, oh, oh, Conway. All the head and and briefs as usual. Does he know you? Yes, I've been in his chambers. My first assignment. What shall we do? We don't have to do anything. Keep our eyes open. Miss Sybil K. Dom. I am, but you know what the Applebee's cocktail parties are like. You don't have to worry about me. I know all about you. What, the darling? Netflix, I'm a detective. I've got to keep my eyes open. At least that's all they told me, but it was quite enough. I die for dear old Scotland Yard. Sybil, this is terribly important. Everything must look entirely natural. That's exactly what they said to me, entirely natural. Aren't you worried about the next? No, oh, darling, there's nothing to worry about. But promise you'll be careful. Oh, I promised Inspector Carby. Not a word, not a word to a soul. That's me. <laughs> Sibyl, we'll never. Sibyl, darling, I do wish you hadn't gone to the airport. Oh, so do I. The dullest people were there. Awful waste of time. <laughs> Hello, people. Hello, Hello Sibyl. Sibyl. Exciting party, isn't it? Exciting. Oh, really? Well, it's going to be exciting. Really? Has Marcia something up her sleeve? You get a word out of me. I don't know. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I do not think I've had the pleasure. Isn't your name Borden? I'm sorry, sir. Count Metri, my wife. How do you do? Uh, my name's Conway Addison. You must forgive me, but it's a most astonishing likeness. It is I who am sorry we have not met before. You will excuse me, sir. Yes, of course. Oh, 
Well, that's the second hurdle over. Your Italian accent didn't sound any too convincing. I think it worked. Anyway, it's not long till 11 o'clock. How long? Three minutes. We'll have to separate. Right. Au revoir. Good luck. I was merely trying to avert a panic. Why shouldn't I go out? But I really thought you I were... don't care what you thought. Perhaps you'd better explain to Lady Need, young man. And then suddenly I felt a hand. And the necklace was jerked away. Milady, the lights were fused intentionally. Marcia, that young man. He had something to do with it, I'm certain. Which young man? Madame is excited, Lady Need. I was merely trying to keep the people quiet. You are being ridiculous, Sibyl. Accusing Count Maitri. Count Maitri? Count Andrea Maitri, madame, at your service. You? You are Count Andrea Maitri? Most certainly. Oh, but it's not true. I know Andrea Maitri. This man's lying. He's not Andrea. You thought he was someone else, too, didn't you? Yes, I could have sworn he was. Sibyl! You're excited. Be careful what you say. Excited? I'm not so excited that I can't remember my friends. If you're Count Metri, where's Eleonora? Eleonora? Your wife. There, you see, he doesn't even know his wife's name. I'd send for the police. Conway, I'm glad you're here. This is terribly embarrassing. What shall I do? I wanted to tell you, Herbert, I mistook this gentleman for somebody else earlier in the evening. You'll excuse me, sir. But in view of the circumstances, I shall have to ask you to wait until the police arrive. Of course. I too am anxious to have this mistake cleared up. Now, just a moment, sir. You won't have to wait. You're quite right, ma'am. This man's somebody we've been looking for for a long time. Now, I'm from Scotland Yard. Come along. Scotland Yard? Yes. And don't worry about the necklace, my lord. We were kind of prepared for this. Woman he came with snatched it, and she's probably at Vine Street by now. I see. I don't believe him. Sybil, this is carrying things too far. You know you've oh, been... Oh, yes, but I'm sober enough now. If you're from Scotland Yard, where are your credentials? Who are you? I'm Detective Sergeant Jackson. He's not. He's lying. I happen to know they weren't sending anyone here tonight. Ring up Scotland Yard and see. We're falling, Borden. Let's go to the window. Separate here. There's a taxi around the corner. It's one of ours. It'll take you home. You mean Maddie was prepared for this? No, why not? And if you get caught, orders are to ring up Newell at his house. A.D. Newell. Now, don't talk to the cops. Talk to him. Newell, the solicitor. Right. Right. Hello. Hello. That's right. All right. All right. All right. My binoculars. Where are they? Investigate A. D. Newell, solicitor. I'm sure he's mixed up with Maddock. His initials A. D. may have reference to born. 1935 A.D. Clue. Might be Maddock himself.
idea of the gun. Well, I might have been followed. Well, nerves jump here for me? I don't like the way things went tonight. You don't like the way things went tonight. <laughs> You're the here medic. Of all the messes I've ever seen. I thought Maddock never missed. Wasn't his fault the necklace turned out to be Pace? What? Yeah. Someone must have tipped him off. Lucky for you, you came straight back here. Where else would I go? Who knows? Anyhow, the orders are for you to stay in this room till you hear from Maddock. Suits me. What about Natasha? Did she get away all right? Yeah. She got away. So you see, gentlemen, at one time or another, each of you has appeared as counsel for members of the Maddock gang, without knowing it, of course. Certainly. Certainly. Now, in each case, you received instructions from Mr. Newell. Many cases in which conviction seems certain were repeatedly upset by last-minute evidence. Now, what we want to know is this. Was there anything unprofessional in the cases Mr. Newell brought to you? Absolutely no, as far as I'm concerned. Nor I. That's all there is to say, gentlemen. My practice was failing. I needed money. I accepted the retainer, even though it came anonymously. You mean to tell me you never knew the man who sent you this money? Didn't even know his name? The money was sent to me in cash. Instructions to defend men who came to me from time to time. And you never suspected that all these criminals you defended were members of the Maddock gang? I've told you that apart from seeing Maddock's name in the newspapers, I know nothing about him. I hate repeating myself, Inspector. But if you doubt my word, you know what steps to take. I take it you stand willing to turn over to us all your records and papers? Every record in the office, if you like. Oh, Baird, just show these gentlemen to the waiting room, then come back. I want you to get some papers from the files. It's all the same to you. I think we'd better stay in here. I find my position quite humiliating enough without having to make good my word under police supervision. However, if you wish to stay... We'll wait outside. I want the records of every criminal case we've handled this year. Yes, sir. You don't think he might be the old boy himself? Not likely. But he knows more than he's told us. Is that all? Not quite, sir. Well, I wonder how much longer it's going to be. We'll give him a few minutes more. Seems a fair amount of stuff there. Huh. More paperwork. Oh! He's shot! Used a silencer. Dead. Now what the... Quick, all the fire. Stay right where you are. Nobody must leave. <laughs> one hundred. That's more than I've ever seen in my life at one time. Maddock never let you down yet, did he? Just a minute. Go on, get out. That's it. Yes, mother? The verdict on Newell is suicide. We just paid off, Baird. I'm going to lay a trap for Borden. Why waste time? Nothing ever went wrong we took him on. I want to be certain, and I want to find out how he does it. I'll take these instructions. Sorry, 
about that newel dip, Maddox still functioning, have orders for a hold up. Oh, the Countess, come in. I've never been so pleased to see anyone in my life. That sounds genuine. It is. Partly because I'm bored, but uh, chiefly because it's you. Don't say you came on business. No. Good. As a matter of fact, I'm taking a chance coming here. Really? Well, that makes it all the better. Have a chair. And a drink, maybe. I might. Good. What's going on? Well, cheers. Gordon, why did you get into this? Into what? Into the gang. Why is any man a crook? You're not. I've seen enough of you now to know that my first impression was the right one, before you showed me that bracelet. Oh, yeah? There's something wrong about real crooks. You get a feeling about them, like the feeling you have about snakes. What ho, more feelings? You're not a real criminal. Well, of course not. I, uh, I made a work for Maddox because I'm bored with my mother, the Duchess. Some people get in because of circumstances and regret it. <laughs> I may be an author in search of material. And incidentally, there's nothing snaky about you, my girl. Circumstances? My father, refugee, stranded in London after the revolution. He taught me to live by my wits. I was very young. When I got old enough to protest, it was too late. We'd got in with Medic. Nice man, your father. A weak man. Is he still with Medic? He's dead. I see. May I ask where all this conversation is leading? Pete, I want to quit this. I wanted to get away from Eric for a long time. I couldn't. I was afraid. You're the first person I've ever met that I can count on. Come away before it's too late. We'll help each other. We can make a go of it somewhere. Not so fast. Hadn't you better be careful? That sort of talk might be fatal if it got to Medic. I know what I'm doing. It won't come to Medic through you. My heart is an open book, I suppose, and you can trust me unto death and all that. Yes, if that means anything to you. Well, maybe I have a better nature. But how do you propose to bring it out? I love my work. What were you doing out there? You know, medic's going to be interested to hear the way you feel about snakes. <laughs> Be a fool, Delaney. I shouldn't tell Medic something you already know. What's that? That was a trap born on Medic's instructions. As far as I'm concerned, you stood it. Delaney, I'm tired of having you follow me around. And if I report that you've interfered with this assignment, you'll hear from Medic. Well, it seems to be that, doesn't it? Not quite. You know, I should stay away from that girl if I was you. Seems to be a sensible bit of advice, thanks. Now you can do something for me, Delaney. Yeah? I'd like to do. Any little favor. You'll do this. Get word to Maddie, I've got to see him at once. It's important, understand? What do you want to see him about? That's between Maddie and me. Well, it should be easy. I think Maddie will want to see you when I tell him about this. William Hicks, Hatton Garden, three o'clock. Mr. Hicks? Yes? You've taken Inspector Hall from New Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Yes. 
Mr. Hicks, I trust we can rely on your discretion. Of course, Inspector. Good. We've had information there's going to be a hold-up here this afternoon. What? In this case, we've got to protect you without having any police here. But, Inspector, what will I do? Put your valuables in a safe. Just before three o'clock, two drunk men will start a fight in the street. That'll attract several of our constables. They've got orders to protect you without appearing to. But uh, why don't you just put a policeman in here? That'll tip the gang off. We've got secret information. I understand, but... Uh... There's nothing to worry about, Mr. Hicks. Carry on just as usual. Hello. Clancy? This is Williams. A Scotland Yard man was just here. All right, Williams. Stay there till it blows over. Maddock? Borden squealed. All right, Borden, what is it? Well, do we have to go through all this light business again, Maddock? Can't I see you now? No, come to the point. Well, if you insist. I'm tired of the way things have been going wrong lately. What do you mean to do about it? Well, I've got an idea for a big killing. But after what's happened, I'll trust nobody but you. Well, what is it? I'll tell it to you in person, Maddock. I don't see people in person. What is it? It's the Camden Loan Society. They've got 100,000 in cold cash in a safe a baby could open. How do you know about this? I found it before I joined up with you. There's enough to retire on there if we keep it between ourselves. It sounds interesting, Borden. I'll look it up. If it's what you say, I'll see you after the job. That's all. Medic. What? Did you ever send Natasha to test Borden? No, why? She's with him. I caught her yesterday making him a proposition to run out on us. She said it was on your orders. It wasn't. Well, we can take care of her too. First of all, I want to tell you that Borden's not to be touched. He's the best protection we've ever had. I'm going to make him think I'm taking up this job of his, so he can tip the yard on it. That'll keep them busy while we pull the biggest stroke we've ever undertaken and we can't miss. The instructions are as follows. I've persuaded Maddox to attempt Camden Loan Society job as planned. Job to take place at four o'clock this afternoon. Maddock promises to see me if it is successful. Maddock promises to see me if it is successful, so there must be no interference. I am to be at the Loan Society's office at four sharp with the girl. After the job, man will pick me up in green car, take me to unnamed place to meet Maddock. Well, now, that's what I call getting results. I'll wait until I see Maddock behind bars. That's very promising, very. We must have Borden followed at any cost, both to protect him and to make sure of Maddock. Card B, you'll take charge of the arrangements at the Loan Society's office. Right. So, oh, come in. This is Clancy. You've met before, but you don't know it. Hello, Borden. Oh, of course, the voice in the dark. Sit down. Thanks, we've got to get started. Oh, no. My order said Natasha would call for me. Well, I've been changed. You and I are going together now. Delaney will wait for Natasha. All right. Well, I hate to leave this. I think I would have won. Don't you worry, I'll finish your game for you. Oh, I wouldn't trouble. No trouble. Pleasure, I assure you. Yeah. I believe he would have won. Well, why do we stop here? Ever hear of the Marauder of Batula? I've seen his name in the papers. Why? Well, His Highness arrived in London this morning. 
complete with half a million pounds in diamonds. Maddock wants them. Yes, but what about the loan society job? That? Well, that's all right. We'll pick that up tomorrow. I see. Well, what do we do? Practically nothing. We are only atmosphere. Webb does it all. The hell with the boys over there. What time is it? Four. You know, Borden, the old man's taking quite an interest in you. He liked that loan society idea so much. He wants to talk to you after we pull this one. What a day? So he said. If everything goes off, all right. Here they come. Take it easy. Come on, girl. Gonna meet Maddox. Where's Pete? He's on his way to the Withies. That's why I'm taking you. To the Withies? Why? We're gonna meet Maddox there. They're going to meet Maddox at the Withies. What's the Withies? Why should Medic be meeting us? I don't know. Probably to celebrate catching a policeman in the gang. A policeman? Who? My Borden, of course. <laughs> Rather good you're trying to make him give up a life of crime. That's not true. It can't be. All right. See for yourself. Come on. But if Borden is a policeman, why does Medic let... What, live? Well, that'll all be attended to. Don't worry. I expect you'll see him in time to kiss him goodbye. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Yeah, very. Especially when you remember you had to finally lie to him after that heavy sob story of yours. <laughs> Awfully funny. Taking him to the Withies? What's the Withies? Yes, yes, all right. Well, keep your eye on that room and report anything further that happens. Yeah. Something went wrong. Borden didn't turn up at the Lone Society, nor did the girl. What? Nobody did. Oh. Yeah. What? They did? All right, I'll call you back. The Mirage of Petula's jewels. They held up the van and got away with it. That's the answer. They used the Lone Society idea to trick us. Yeah, and well, now they're taking Borden to somewhere called the Withers to meet Merrick. What's the Withers? Withers? Withers are willows, particularly the Osier willow. Might be the name of some country house. Well, whatever it is, we've got to find it. Don't you see what this means? If they're on the board, they'll kill him. <laughs>
defensive. See if Borden's got a gun. Borden, open the door. Go into the corridor. Open the first door on your right. The rest of you stay where you are. Go ahead. Tensi, when Natasha comes, let me know. <laughs> Whichever you prefer. I congratulate you, Borden. You're the only person who knows my identity. And certainly the only policeman. Policeman? Yes. Tell me, how did you communicate with the Yard? You don't expect me to tell you that, do you? Yes, I do, rather. You see, I'm going to kill you, Borden but I'll wait till my curiosity is satisfied. Of course, if you choose... Well, I don't seem to have much choice, do I? <laughs> Sit down. Know the withers? That old house here, was it? Yes. How far? We ought a good eight miles, sir. It's hard to find. Hop in. And the deaf man simply read my lips. Very ingenious. Very ingenious indeed. If you're a medic, why did you help trip me up at the Mead reception? Well, that was simple. I wasn't medic then, I was Conway Addison. I had to act the part. Very thorough, weren't you? <laughs> I owe my success to it. Well, tell me what medic born 1935 AD means. Don't you know? I was going to ask you that. That's the cleverest clue I've ever left. <laughs> and I don't understand it myself. <laughs> well, I'm out of any more questions, unless you tell me why you came into this. I was bored, my dear fellow. I grew so tired of defending dull people accused of crimes which were always the same. So I decided, quite logically, to make life more interesting by committing exciting crimes in an exciting way. <laughs> it was fascinating. Like playing chess with life and death. Of course, you think I'm mad, don't you? What else can I think? I prefer to call it genius. After all, the dividing line is very thin, isn't it? If it weren't genius, I couldn't kill you and all the others in there with as little compunction as I'm going to feel. So you're going to kill the others too? Yes. It suits my plans. I want to retire, and I wish to leave no possible trace. Yes? Maddock. Delaine is here. Natasha's gone to the police. They might be here any minute. Keep calm and stay where you are. Is he here? Please? No, I'm alone. Where's Pete? Where is he? 
I wouldn't dream of spoiling the last few moments of your little romance, old chap. Go and join her. Huh? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> Let go, you fool. He's going to kill a lot of you. You're lying. I'm trying to get out of it. It's locked. Gordon's right. It's very deplorable, gentlemen. But it's the only way out for me. However, you'll find death painless. <laughs> All over in a few minutes. We'll be saved. The body's on the way. Do you hear that, Edison? You can't get away with it. Oh, yes, I can. I'm in a safe place. There's a chap with me who's been here since Cromwell was hunting royalists. Nobody ever found him, and nobody will ever find me. Ah! Yes! It is, Gus! I ought to take a chance at your manic just once! Of course you would, but you won't. And it's absolutely no use you drawing that gun, Clancy. Drawing a gun? Clancy, he can see us! What do you mean? Well, don't you understand? He can't see through walls! It must be! It's walled in! It's a trick mirror! <laughs> Natasha! <laughs> Natasha! So that's what A.D. meant. Addison. All right, boys. Take it away. <coughs> Natasha. Oh, Pete. I want to say goodbye to you and tell you I'm glad I was right about you. Whatever happens to me. But nothing's going to happen to you. Why, it was you who made all this possible. I'm sorry, Borden, but you'll have to go with the rest. Come on. I'm going with her, and I'll get her off if it takes the rest of my life. It probably won't. Well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.